Okay, so Kelsey's on her way home. Um, you know, I'm like a lost puppy when she's not home, just walking around bumping into walls and shit. I got nothing to do. What do I do right now? I got 45 minutes to kill. Oh, what's this? Gee, if exes were 100% honest, a 37 minute video from none other than Jubilee. So basically, if you haven't seen this series, it's like they turn around, the host asks a question, and then they either walk on false or true, right? So if you're in an active couple, it's a little bit like, it's you know a little bit more awkward to tell the truth. I feel like if you're an ex, you're probably jumping at the opportunity to be on this show. It's like, yes, finally, being able to say the, the, all the things I wanted to say. You, your butt stinks. True or false, your butt stinks. True. I'll, I'll pitch the questions. True. Your cheeks smell. I don't know how your cheeks have an odor, but they do. And I've always wanted to say that and never been able to say it. And now finally on this YouTube show, I've said it. You have stinky cheeks. I feel like this is gonna be a little uncomfortable. So I've cracked something to take the edge off. <laughs> A little non-alcoholic beer here. 130 cows in this bad boy? And there's no alcohol in this fucking thing? What's the point? Hello, and welcome to Split Decision. I'm your host, Kot Takahashi. Kot Takahashi, damn, that's a sick name. Got a really, it's really nice bounce to it. Kot Takahashi. And today, we brought four ex-couples to the studio. Some of these couples are reuniting for the first time. Some are still seeking closure. That is a lie. And some, may still be in love. I really just like want to be with you. You're about to face some of the toughest. Oh God, this is gonna be, uh, I hope you I hope you have a long lunch break today. I hope for some reason you got an extra long one because we are in for it. And if not, you know, watch it, into, watch it in a couple pieces, you know? Hey, you want to get lunch? I can't. I got to watch the latter half of if exes were 100% honest, wish I could. I will miss having sex with my ex. Make your split decision in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know that's gotta be a little bit of a stab in the, oh, what? You said no? Oh man, I thought I was good at it. I guess I suck at fucking. <sighs> yes, but Luna, you say no, I will not miss having sex with my ex. Why is that? Um, I just haven't really felt any sexual urges for anyone for a while. So it's not just him in particular. It's just not something that's been on my mind lately. Mm -hmm. It's a good answer, safe answer, but that's that's a great answer. Dane. I mean, yeah, I totally would, would love to. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm just gonna have to move on from that. How does it feel knowing that she's stepping on the no right there? Oh, it's, it's no biggie, you know. Okay. Were you expecting that? Yeah, I was. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Cause I've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of an uncomfortable laugh there, but it's like, <laughs> just been sending unsolicited nudes, you know, I've been trying, but <laughs> to no avail. You're no, but Mia, you're yes. So Mia, I'd love to hear more. I feel like the sex was cool for the time and I enjoyed it, but I feel like if we were to try to revisit it now, it would be weird just on like an emotional level. But like the sex was good physically. Ray, why are you, why are you on no? Um, the sex was better for Mia than it was for me, mm. just because of the dynamics that we had specifically. Sex was better than for Mia than it was for me, or for he's like, host is like, wait, for who? Mia or me or Ray or Ray for you or you? What was it that you wanted that you weren't really getting? I'm a top. I'm so, also a top. Yeah, so that, that's and like what we're having. That's the conversation we're having yeah, here. Like yeah. I like, I enjoy topping like yeah. a lot, and okay. so like I was like switching to accommodate, and you were not as much. Got it. Yeah. Topping. Yeah. To be frank, I wanted to strap her more than she wanted to be strapped. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's happening. It's crazy that you said that verbally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify, <laughs> just to clarify what, if anyone doesn't know what topping means, here it is, right here. And by strap, that means strap on. Priscilla, Victor, you both say yes. I think we have a really good sex life. I'd only ever been with one other person before him. So when we got together, I was really given the space to like explore like sexuality in the room and new things. And it was just like a very safe and fun space. <laughs> For me, I'm super into like the BDSM world. Okay. So getting to like finally explore that. Well, it's always the people you least expect. 
I feel like, that are into BDSM. Is it not? Like, I feel like it's always the quiet, like, sort of... Not that she's quiet, but you can tell she's, like, timid and a nice person. That's what I can tell right now from her temperament. She's just very like, yeah, I've only been with one other person, so, you know, it's a safe space to explore, and I wanted that, so I could, you know, like, tie him up and fucking gag ball him and drip, drip candle wax all over his... taking balls. <laughs> Just, I wanted to explore that, okay? Sue me. It's like, whoa, whoa, I was not expecting you to say that. You know, I haven't tried too much stuff, so being with him in a room together where I could put him in a gimp suit and kick him in the nuts over and over again was was just nice, it was free. That, after like just reading about it for so long, okay, was very fun for me. <laughs> One out of 10, how was the experience? Oh, it was a 10. How was it for you, Victor? Uh, ten, ten. <laughs> ten, ten. I just want some suspense there. Yeah. Ray, how about you? One to ten. How would you rate? I feel like he saw her face and he was like, uh, ten, ten, ten. You guys aren't together anymore. You don't have to lie. It's not a ten to say that. Uh, sex with Mia. Uh, it's like a six. A six? Yeah. It's like not bad sex. That's all I can really say. You got what you wanted a lot more than I did. My, Jen, what? attracted you both together. So I actually, he's not my type at all. <laughs> so then, yeah, so it was only after that he grew on me, then I was like, I do like taller, bigger guys. Okay. Yeah, so then now he's very attractive to me. How about for you? Yeah, it's like the same thing. We, uh, we started as best friends, and then so I never got attracted to her whatsoever. Um, and then it just grew, you know, it's, it's that. <laughs> Why do they have to like rub it in like that, you know? Both of them were like, I wasn't attracted like at all. Like whatsoever. The emphasis he just put on whatsoever literally made her go, okay, I get it. Same thing with her. He's not my type at all. At all. Like just to, uh, thinking about it back then is making me hard gag. Now I'm in love with him. Definitely find him super hot. Back then, uh, uh, uh. Next prompt is, my family and friends thought I could do better. This is gonna get uncomfy. Took yourself in. This is gonna get uncomfy. Your split decisions in three, two, one. Go ahead and turn around. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Luna, you say yes. Your friends and family thought you could do better. Tell us more. My family liked Dane. It was more so my friends knowing of situations that we had been through. Do you have an example? So, I remember New Year's Eve in New Orleans? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was pretty what angry. Happened? What happened? Um, yeah, what, hap what happened? Yeah, I'm with, I'm with Caught on this one. What happened? We went to a show and we came back and I had said something that upset him. He kind of threw a fit and he just walked out the door and I ended up spending New Year's alone that night at my friend's house because everybody else was off doing stuff. So I was just kind of crying in the bed by myself and had no idea where he went just because of a small argument that had ensued earlier. That sucks. Oh, what a shitty move. Jesus Christ. Okay, and then, so your friends know about that kind of stuff. It, you know, made them think less of him for sure. I was not the best on that New Year's and I am very aware that her friends weren't too fond of me after that for sure. And that was just like getting close to the end of our relationship. But I, my friends and family really liked Luna, you know? Not all of them liked me. Yeah. Yeah, no. So, Ray, you're- Again! Give some fucking context! So just move on! I wanted a little context on that. Okay, here's the thing. New Year's always kind of shitty. New Year's kind of always- the shit always ends up happening, right? Still a shitty move to leave your significant other on New Year's. It's not a good way to start the year. Vote alone on the couch, especially if he like went out partying. Could you imagine that? Like if he was like, I'm, I'm out of here. And then just like went to the club, that would be shitty. But anyways, yeah, it is just a shitty thing to do in general. So not surprised that the end of their relationship came shortly after that. They also found out about the PowerPoint that you made about my red flags after our first date. That's so and funny. That's, the, isn't it hilarious? The PowerPoint? Yeah, yeah. she made a PowerPoint that? of my red flags after our first date and she went through it with her friends and then- We were drunk. Eventually, I found. Oh, oh, okay. No, and then I like told my friends like, haha, and they were like, hey, that's actually not okay. Mm. So, Mio. Oh, ah. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Right. I would be like, wait, what the fuck? After the first time you guys hung out, she made a fucking PowerPoint. First of all, making a PowerPoint in general is weird. If you're not 
in a fucking corporate environment or giving some sort of corporate presentation or school, I guess. Just making a PowerPoint for just social reasons, that's bizarre as fuck, even if you're drunk. But to, to pick out someone's red flags after the first date kind of means you're probably not too hot on them in general. I feel like after if a first date goes well, in your mind, you're like, this person is perfect. I fucking love them. There's nothing wrong with them, right? Who after a first date is like, Ah, I fucking, actually, there's this laundry list of things that I thought were kind of weird, but I'm going to go on a second date and see where it goes. Nah. Why did you say yes? The way that you would speak to me sometimes, mm -hmm. like, wasn't okay. Like, you almost had, like, no filter to a point where you were just, like, being mean to me all the time. Yeah, that's right. Was... Man, it sounds like this relationship sucked ass. Both of them just sound like they were not right for each other. The next prompt is... I cheated on my ex. Oh, bye. Here we go. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Uh oh. Jen, you're on yes. Yeah. So we were just really young. We dated since high school. We realized that we had very different love languages. And then I was just always constantly searching that in other people. But yeah, like I messed up and then I hurt him a lot because I'm also his first girlfriend and everything. Mm. And so like everything like really came crashing down. Yeah, he's still hurt. I feel like you can tell he's like, yeah, it was not cool. Hard after, how, did, how did you find out? It was like a friend that we hung out with in a group uh -huh. for I think like about three years or so. She talked to him and he talked to her behind my back. So then the girl that was with that guy at that time, I found out from her because she sent me me messages okay. that they deleted from each other. So it hurt uh, like really, really, really bad because uh, I'm, I'm a guy of respect, you know, and then that's kind of disrespecting me. And you were in love with her? Yeah, yeah, I was. I mean, she was my first and then I thought she was my last too. Oh, this is rough. That made you want to cheat on him. I don't know, like, I always told him, like, when we started being together, I was like, I hate cheaters because I got cheated on before, too. I thought she was going to say, I always told him I'm going to cheat on you. <laughs> uh, it was from the moment we met, I, I said, I'm a cheater. So just get ready because I'm going to cheat on you. I'm going to cheat on you, mister. I think it was just more environmental factors, like how I am with my family. Like, I'm just like this perfect person. And then I think I always wanted to, like, self-destruct, self-sabotage. But he was like literally everything I ever had. Like, he was the best person, like, best boyfriend. He treated me right. Like, our love language was very different. But like, I mean, he loved me and I know that he loved me. But then I don't know what happened. And I like, that's my biggest regret. Aw, fuck, man. This is sad as hell. There's just nothing redeeming about this. For the cheating, I tried to make it work, you know, but it was still in my mind, in the back of my mind. The trust was gone. Is there a chance? I mean, there's there's always a possibility. So you're saying there's a chance? It is. Since our separation, I've been with someone who is better in bed. Oh, fuck. Man, I feel like that has to hurt. Knowing that, getting visual confirmation of that, you know it's probably true. Chances are it's probably true. You know, generally people are pretty average in bed, I feel like. Or, or I guess I should say people probably think that they are better than they are maybe. So then, I don't know, this would, this would suck. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. So Jen, after the breakup, yeah. there was someone else who was even better. So like when I was with him, like that's the best I ever had. But then like when we broke up, like I was with someone that like really loved me, like really like. This man is getting shit on right now. Not only is she like, yeah, I cheated on him. I regret it because he was awesome. But also I found someone that was better afterwards. So maybe I don't regret it. <laughs> It's like the worst fucking thing ever. Me, everything, like in the short amount of time that like for eight years, like, I couldn't even feel with him. So mm. that's why I think that love, their sex was bad. Wait, what did she say? He like really like just gave me everything like in the short amount of time that like for eight years, like, I couldn't even feel with him. Ah, oh, fuck. God. This is bad, man. So mm. that's why I think that love, their sex was better in the sense that it was like love. But I think that's what I was missing. Oh, she's not talking about the physicalness. Okay. From him was like, I couldn't. Orgasm. I couldn't 
orgasm. Steve loved the way that he gave. Did you feel that way too during the sex? Like you couldn't no. give your love? I, I thought I gave my all, 100% of it, because that's all I knew. So I, I gave my 100. Now I'm much better though. I've, I've learned a lot. It's not just you, I've, or is he on false? He's standing on false, isn't he? How do you feel that um, she's standing on yes right now, that yes, she had a better experience since you? I mean, good for you. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, I feel like we were always pretty sex positive, so I think yeah. uh, if you're out there having great sex, like I'm not gonna hold it against you. It would be weird to uh, expect her to only have bad sex after the fact, you know? <laughs> I feel like I kind of pushed you to date other people. He, yeah, he kind of really yeah. did. I kind of I had a very negative view on relationships after we broke up because I was like just completely shattered and all my thoughts and beliefs were pretty much destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you sit through the way she said that? <laughs> pretty much everything I ever knew was completely shattered and destroyed. <laughs> um, you're single, like get out there, meet people, like leave your house. We were together for two years and we- I feel like my impression of them right now, there's like, there's nothing toxic about them, I feel like. Broke up in July of 2021. I started feeling like I wasn't wanting to be in a relationship anymore. So yeah, I broke up with her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next prompt is- uh, Well, maybe I take it back. <laughs> God, just fucking, I feel like it's a shrug. He's just a walking like shrug, not in a bad way. Just like everything he says, it, mm, well. Mm. Well, guilty. I never fully trusted my ex when we were together. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, everybody, go ahead and turn around. Who's got trust issues? So, Ray, you never fully trusted Mia when yeah. you were together. So the second time that we dated, it was Polly, and it started off with me being a secret to one of her other partners, so I didn't know that I existed, and then once I found out that I existed, didn't know why I was in Mia's life, i.e. we were dating. Um, so it just made me feel like anyone that she brought around, I didn't fully trust that they knew who I was and why I was around. For whatever reason, Mia felt like uh, she couldn't tell this person about me. Mia, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty fair. I mean, it was kind of a weird situation because they had kind of like asked not to be privy to those things and we were probably at the time. That was like her kind of preference with things. So I just like didn't bring it up. But I was like your main. So it wasn't like we were just hooking up. You were like literally my girlfriend. Yeah. And she was the side. You know what I'm saying? Not to like break down polyamorous relationships <laughs> oh like God. that. But like you were my girlfriend. Like I was your partner. And yeah. then she was just someone that was a branch of other relationships. Uh huh. But did this other person know that? Did yes. you communicate that to them? Yes. Yeah, everyone knew. Like, mm, I, not everyone. Oh man, oh, this is like, this is starting to become an argument. What's more fun than being in an argument? Watching another couple argue. She knew you existed, she just didn't know like who you were because she didn't want to know. Like, I don't know, man. It's over, you, you, don't, you don't even speak anymore, so it's, it's chill, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Luna, so you never, <sighs> that was uncomfy. The trust wasn't fully ever there. In the beginning it was, um, and there was an incident where I was using his phone as a flashlight and a girl texted him saying, come cuddle. And he swore that nothing sexual had happened to cause that. And whether I told myself I believed him or not, I just never could really come back from it. Dane, 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 what are you Dane? What are you doing? What are you Dane? Yes, you're right. What are you doing? You're walking out on New Year's Eve, you're fucking texting around. Come on, Dane. Are you worthy of trust? I don't know. Anything you want to say to that? Yeah, so like that was out of the blue for me as well. That was my sister. <laughs> this was my cousin, I swear. That was my girl best friend at the time. But no, uh, yeah, it was a random come cuddle and she knew that I was with Luna and like it was just like, Dane thing. said she was doing it on purpose. There's no random cum cuddles. I'm sorry, that doesn't randomly happen. Nobody randomly says cum cuddle. I've gotten zero of those in my lifetime. Sorry, a little bit random, but like cum cuddle. I don't know, it's just fucking raining. I'm just like, you know, I'm kind of cold, so I'm just shooting that out to people. So, cum cuddle. Yeah, to try, I think she's like, doing so it I could see purpose. it and get jealous to try and mm. get at me. So if you felt so, that way, then why was the trust gone though? Oh no. I, I, oh no, that's story. what you're saying. Yeah, that's that, what that was my was story. Saying. Oh, I see, I see, I see. True story. Gotcha. <laughs> um, 
Um, I don't know. I feel like that. Look at how red he is in the face. There's no way that's fucking true. He's looking at the camera like, you guys believe me, right? Right? People here? That's a real thing. Could have been part of it, but I didn't know if that was the whole story. How come you don't believe him when he says that? Something probably happened there. I don't know. But even if it didn't, like, the fact that someone had felt comfortable enough to text him that while she knew he was dating me still made me uncomfortable. And I could see why. Nobody says come cuddle. Not, there's, especially fucking best friends. Listen, a lot of guys think that guys and girls can't be, like, just friends, right? But it sounds like... I think they can. It sounds like it sounds like this dude also is arguing that yes, they can. So if your best friend who is platonic sends you a text that says "come cuddle," you'd be like, "Ew, what the, f what the fuck? No, ew." And the platonic friend would know that you would say that. Otherwise, there, there's probably something going on. You know, just to, <laughs> just to be the relationship police for a second. The next prompt is: I've recently cried thinking about my ex. Make your split decisions in three. Two, one. My, we recently cried over Jen, huh? Yeah, I mean like, it's not just one time, it was like multiple times since we're playing the scenarios. It's like shattering, you know? Like you had hopes and dreams of mm -hmm. something that would, you know, be like the end, but it's not. And then like every time that I think about it, it's just, it's just like heartbreaking. Oh, fuck man. <laughs> I need some actual alcohol in this. This is tough. We always try to talk about like getting back together because like we're like almost 30 now. Like we should have like a family and kids. Or I mean like it's expected of me to have family and kids. But then I feel like there's so much things that are just broken and dented in our relationship that it, I don't think it'll go well even though I want it to go well. So if I never like messed up in the past or if I never like took him for granted, then we would probably still be together. Ugh. Fuck, this actually fucking hurts watching someone admit these things. I'm mostly like in the wrong in our relationship pretty much. I was really lazy and I could have done a lot of things differently. So whenever I- Really? You, Dane? No, come on. Come cuddle, brother. I think about how happy I was in our relationship and how I was really like not the best. Makes me, you know, tear up, cry. How do you feel? Aw, uh, okay, well, you know. Knowing that he's this emotional about this. I feel bad, I guess. I mean, I feel, honestly, I feel neutral over it. I hate that he still gets upset about it, but it is what it is. It is what it is. The next prompt is, I loved my ex more than they loved me. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. So Mai, you loved uh, Jen more than she loved you. There, there were things that she did that showed me that she doesn't love me. Like um, maybe like cheating on you, perhaps. Is that one one of the things? She's like a word of affirmations kind of kind of person, but even though the words say that you know she loves me, it doesn't show it. The disrespect, the mistrust, yeah. I mean, I thought I knew what love was. I thought I loved him, but of course, like if you love someone, you don't really go and do that. And oh my god, I get, I get, I mean, like I get, like why she said that. It makes sense, but like that's a, also a brutal thing to say, just in out in the open, like if I just never loved you. I guess that means I never loved you. You're still crying over me, and I guess what? I never loved you. I think they're still in love, but there's that broken trust that potentially could never get prepared. And that is the saddest thing ever. I appreciate and love him more. So roles have been reversed now, but before it was definitely him loving me a lot more. Mm -hmm. Priscilla, you loved him more than he loved you during the relationship? He initially pursued me. And then as we got more and more into it, I mean, he's the one who broke up with me. So obviously I loved him more. At that point, he was my forever. I never saw anybody else but him. For like me. the one? Yeah, he was just the one. Victor, did you know that she thought, she felt that you were the one? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what else can I say about this? Uh, yeah, she would say it all the time. <laughs> uh, no, you know what, I, I learned, uh, something about myself in that relationship, and that was that I'm not that much of a relationship person. It was like tough to reconcile because while we were in it, it felt like this is such a good relationship. This is so solid. Like this is somebody that I should have in my life forever. But 
it still wasn't like satisfying on the inside. Like I still didn't feel like I wanted to be in a relationship. So you haven't been in a relationship since? Since we broke up, I haven't dated anybody. But no, he's definitely the kind of person where mid conversation, he's like, I'm done with this conversation. Mm. And that's how I felt a long time about our relationship that he mm. just woke up and was like, yeah, I'm good about this now. <laughs> How did that feel when you when you discovered that? When you felt that from him, like, oh, he's done. Felt awesome. No, it felt really fucking good. Caught. Felt like shit, dude. <laughs> it felt really cool. Yeah, no, it felt awesome. Are you are you dumb? What if someone just fucking went off on him? That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. This guy with the stash, man, it's just a fucking. Yeah, I don't want to be tied down. No, not a relationship person. Not dating ever again. No, I just want to fucking go for beers whenever I want. Specifically when I felt it, it was about three months before we broke up because we went to the movies and I went to hold his hand and it was the first time he didn't hold it back. Mm. And I just instinctively knew that like something was off. And then two days after my birthday, Oof. that's when he decided. Yo, everyone in here, God damn, there's some shit going on in this room. I mean, everybody does crazy shit, you know? That's why fucking these videos are good because it's just like, it's just crazy hearing it. Luna, Dane, you both say yes, you both loved each other more. Dane, let's start with you. You know, in a relationship, you're, you're, you're physical with your partner. You tell them that they're cute, amazing, and that you love them. You always reassure them how much they mean to you. And I never got any of that from Luna, mm. which made me it really that is like- a lie. That apparently is that's true. a lie, but. That's how I felt, and it just like threw me off in our relationship for sure. I tried to say positive things to you, but if you didn't hear them, that's... What was it you didn't hear, like... Things that made me feel appreciated or important, you know? Mm -hmm. And so... Like, you know, I'd love to hear like a come cuddle every now and then. <laughs> we are having fun! You know, I never got to come cuddle. I would like to hear that every now and then. That makes me feel good. My best friend knows that, fucking... <laughs> Knows that for sure. Why do you say yes, Luna? Actions speak louder than words. I feel like I made more sacrifices for our relationship, and I just don't like felt like my I didn't feel like my energy was matched by Dane. I think they both have like different love languages because I feel like you probably have words of affirmation. So all right, with the love languages. All right, okay. Did you did you cheat? Is that a love language? Cheating is not cheating a love language. No, I know love languages are real and everything, but it's like. This dude's walking out on New Year's, he's getting texts. I think there's some bigger things going on than love languages. You need that, and then, the, oh, yeah, so that's was, probably uh, what she, like, yeah, you thought she was sure. lacking, because that's how me and I I was I also gonna too. say that we both have yeah. different perspectives of yeah. love, and it's just like, it doesn't work because we can't give each other what we each other need, you yeah, know? You, like, telling me you love me and I'm beautiful doesn't equate to me asking you for help in a certain area of our relationship and like over and over and over again. I definitely feel you like I made sacrifices that went unnoticed in our relationship still, and you still don't even notice them. What kind okay, of sacrifices? Like, what? like moving all the way from Florida to live in Alabama so she could be closer to her family. And You're I, the one who like, you wanted to move in together the most. You wanted to make that move initially. I, right? I, don't, I think you wanted to make the move the most, but I'm, 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 I don't want to I don't want to do this right now. No, do it! That's what this is for. <laughs> this, is the, this is the place to do it, I feel like. Yeah, it's agreed, Luna, but we're on the same page. I'm the one who got the apartment. <laughs> I went and worked, and I I didn't go them. work at all or make any money or put in or contribute to any of that. I know you did a lot, but I just felt like I, I did feel like I was doing more. Did you feel like you were doing more? I didn't feel like I was doing more. I felt like we were equally like striving for you something. You felt like it was equal. I feel like it was equal for a while there, but until I realized that she didn't feel the same way, and then I stopped trying as hard. I see. Ray, you want to share your experience? There was a period of time where I- This is fucking horrible, man. Also, I really hope that Dane doesn't have weed leaves on his pants, truly. That would be real. That would be the most unfortunate thing about all of this is Dane's pants, potentially. I would literally bend over backwards for you and like run across all the seas to like make you happy. And I didn't feel any of that back. I like thinking about it right now, I can't think of a single thing that you ever did for me that was specifically like for me, like just to make me happy. I think you loved how much I loved you more than you actually loved me. I didn't feel loved by you until- Oh, damn. Bars. That one hit, that hit. I know a lot of people right now just went, whoa. 
damn that's what's wrong with my shit you loved how much i loved you but you didn't actually love me fuck that hits honestly like recently i don't know it felt like too little too late for me like by the time you were like open and willing to like put an effort like that like i was already kind of like checked out like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that entire time, though, I didn't feel any love from you. Like, you actually forced me not to say I love you the first time I wanted to say it, because you could, like, see that I wanted to say it. You were like, hey, don't say that. So that I didn't say it. You didn't. Oh, fuck. You didn't want Ray to say I love you. I don't even remember how many months in that went, but it was, like, really quick. So I felt like it was soon. Do you remember, actually? Yeah, it was, like, only a couple months in, I want to say. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. I was a different person back then. Yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. felt the love. You, yeah, you I felt her. like, yeah, I genuinely felt like I loved you. Honestly, I think we only dated for someone because we were attracted to each other. Like, everything else was, like, fine. Yeah. So. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> Glad we settled that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Caught. Caught. With the freaking waffle shirt. Glad we settled that. <laughs> that was not uncomfortable at all. <laughs> the next prompt is, I made significant sacrifices in our relationship that went unnoticed and unappreciated. All right, we know what we know what everyone's answer is going to be. Ray's going to be yes. Luna's going to be yes. Dane's going to be yes. Tall guy, yes. Make your split decision in three, two, one. Go ahead and turn around. Jennifer, what were some of those things that you did? Like, he's just not really used to his parents telling him I love you and all that. So then I feel like the way that I cared about him, it was just very unnoticed because he didn't really read how I give love the same way. Like, you don't tell me that I'm pretty or you don't tell me mm. that you enjoy being with me. Um, we hang out and I'll be like, oh my God, I really want to hang out with you. And he's like, we have been hanging out, but then we're just like in our room, like doing nothing. I just felt like he didn't really care of how much love I gave him. I mean, I grew up with like a, a household that, you know, them saying sorry to me is like, hey, you want to go eat kind of thing. So it's like never mm -hmm. that those words. So I'm not used to it. And so it, it's really hard. It's like she's speaking Spanish. I'm speaking Chinese and we're trying to like, you know, communicate. It's not it's not easy. You know, mm -hmm. and like at that time, like there's no way that to recognize it. We weren't mature enough. We didn't know anything um, until now. Hmm. Uh, Dane, so you made significant sacrifices that you felt went unnoticed. Most definitely, like just all of the love that I gave her, honestly, that I feel like it went unnoticed and unappreciated because like it's just, it was more materialistic from her and I felt like I had to do more things in order for her to notice what I had to offer. Materialistic? I don't know if that's the right way to say that. Yeah, but the question was like, what did you sacrifice for a relationship? that I didn't appreciate. Me moving all the way to, from Florida just to come live with you in Alabama. But that was something you told me you wanted to do. Because you said you wanted me to do it and I made that sacrifice to be away from my family so you could stay with yours. And it didn't mean anything to you. It did and that's why I tried so hard to keep everything we had going. And I did too. By that time, that's when our relationship definitely started to fail and that's when I feel like you stopped caring as much. Maybe, I mean, you might have been depressed because you moved away and I understand that, I get that, but. And you didn't bother to be there for me or ask I me if I was okay at all. I ever. did all the time, you didn't No, do you were always just like nagging me to do things. <gasps> I think these two people just dated each other because they both have septum piercings. I think that's what it is. I don't think they're, I don't, do not think that they were good for each other. I think they both were just like, oh, yo, fucking yo, you, yo. Yo, you two? Yo, let's fucking, let's, woo, woo, you wanna do this? Like the move was a big enough sacrifice was to show your love. Yeah, I mean, for sure. And like I put us on this really dope catering gig and I got us both these dope jobs. Just because you moved to where I was doesn't mean you don't have to uphold your end of the relationship anymore. Yeah, I feel like if you're gonna make a big decision like that, you have to make it like mutually. You can't do it and then hold it against the other person because that's just always going to corrode it's it's going to cause resentment always if you make a decision like that it's like okay i made it and now we both live here i mean the other person should reckon i don't know it's fucking complicated and life's crazy and i i still upheld my end of the relationship you just stopped noticing me okay i don't want to get like 
into an argument, but. See, like that's every time I bring, like I could sit here and apologize for my parts in the relationship all day long and notice everything that I didn't like do for you. But anytime that I bring up like something I felt in the relationship, you say you don't want to argue and that I'm wrong and that I'm not. I didn't say you're wrong. You pretty much are. You can say it without saying it. I'm like sorry. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you're picture perfect. Oh. oh, fucking god damn it! Wow, look at that! I fucking got poop juice all over my neck and mouth. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm a fan of this dude. I, I feel like he's being pretty unfair right now. I, I do. You can say it without saying it. I'm sorry that you're picture perfect. It's like that's not what she's saying. Okay. Yeah, Luna, so like what specifically were like these, like the adult things that you wanted him to do that he wasn't doing? It was simple things like, can you wash your clothes? Can you pick up after yourself? Can you, after you finish cooking, can you help clean up? But it was like such a thing, like, like I, I could like finish like a bowl of cereal and put the cereal bowl in the sink and just run to the bathroom real quick. Cause you know, it's hard to do things when you gotta use the bathroom. And she'd immediately be like, you didn't wash your freaking dishes. And that just like this was kind of so stuff just happened annoying. so 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 many it's times. Like that's by the time thing, it was like, like yeah, it was just mm. I was over it. It was just always up to me to make sure that things got done. And I feel like that was unsaid in our relationship, but it that was the way it was. In your mind, that's the way it was. Ah, this is so this is just way too real. I feel like I've been on both sides of this. I've you know I've been the person that like will avoid doing shit. And then when you get confronted, you're like, well, I just was had to go to the bathroom. It's hard to do shit when you got to go to the bathroom. It's like, yeah, but you fucking what left a fucking bowl in here like eight days in a row now. Well, I've had to go to the bathroom every fucking day. It just so happens when I eat cereal, Frosted Flakes especially, I get diarrhea right away. So, what, you want me to diarrhea? You want me to wash the dishes and have diarrhea right in front of the kitchen sink? Is that what you want? Because then I got to clean up diarrhea. But also, at the same time, it's like, you got to be an adult and do your shit and keep the place fucking clean because that's also going to fucking create resentment. You made some significant sacrifices that you felt were unappreciated, unnoticed. Yes. Um, when we started dating, we lived like 45 It's crazy how many adult relationships just corrode over dishes and laundry and just household chores. It's crazy. How, how many relationships do you think corrode because of that? Like a significant percentage. Five minutes away from each other and I would drive to you every weekend. You mm -hmm. came to my apartment once to the, what, like six months we were together at that time. Um, I flew from overseas to see you spent like twenty three thousand or twenty three hundred dollars on a plane ticket and you felt like you were doing me a favor by not charging me rent for the month that i was staying with you even though i just paid like two over two grand to come see you no i appreciate you for driving that much like i'll admit i didn't like your apartment i didn't like driving i think it's less about me doing it than how you're responding to me doing it like i never felt appreciated and Mia, you're on yes as well. You also feel like you made significant sacrifices that weren't appreciated? Yeah, I mean, I fucking didn't charge her rent. She stayed with me for a month. <laughs> didn't charge her a cent. I think like emotional labor. No, emotional I don't. Emotional labor? I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't, I honestly cannot imagine a single sacrifice you made for our relationship. Is this about our intimacy? Yeah. That's not a, a sacrifice. No, but it is though, cause it's like, like it was like, Either it's gonna happen your way or it's not gonna happen at all. Bottoming is like not something I wanna do all the time. And like, it, I had to in order to be intimate with you. And there was no like equalness to that whatsoever. And I like was trying to be respectful of the fact that like you weren't comfortable with your body at the time, which is why I did it. But I'm saying that's like a lot of emotional labor to like go through. The intimacy, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I just can't see it that way because I don't, you're not, you didn't, I had such like gender confusion. It was insane. And what was going on inside of my brain and how I felt about myself was worlds larger than anything that you could have been experiencing because you couldn't go down on me. I'm being honest. Like there's no way in the world that you felt as intensely about that as I felt as intensely about how shitty I felt about my body. You're literally telling me that how I felt about it doesn't matter because it pales in comparison to your journey with it's it. It's not that it doesn't matter, but what are you sacrificing from not topping me? Okay, like imagine not being able to top someone that you love. You're a top. Yeah. 
It was like really... my first queer relationship yeah, and I was figuring things out. And yeah. so it was like my identity in my room for growth was not a thing that could happen because of like exterior circumstances. And that sucked for me. And I felt like I, like you only wanted me to be a very specific version of myself mm -hmm. that was in the way that you could have it. And I had to put everything that I was. This is real, man. Holy shit. I'm sorry I'm not weighing in too much here. I just don't feel like I'm well versed enough to weigh in on a queer relationship. But I wonder if they knew that this was going to happen on this video. Probably, you know? Was to the side to accommodate that. Does that make sense? Mm-mm. Is it because... <laughs> sorry. It does. I think it makes... I think it does make sense. I think they're both making good points, it feels like. Next prompt is... I wish my ex and I were still together. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, little analyzation here. Analyzation, that's that's a word, right? Oh my God, I'm, this is too long. It's, this is too long. I'm losing my ability to think. It looks as though there's no weed leaf on his pants. It's just some sort of, just normal plant, sort of uh, lush pants. Okay. Go ahead and turn around. Damn. Oh, that is a, another stab in the heart. We got like, it's like toxic, toxic, and then mustache toxic guy. And then BDSM girl who seems pretty sweet. And then just this stab in the fucking heart. You know, Dane, I'm, I'm a little surprised to see you on No after this conversation today. <laughs> yeah, I know. I changed my mind today. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> You know, just like coming out here with like my own intentions and like just realizing that I'm pretty like stupid for like thinking that me and her would ever have a chance again. And just the way seeing that the way both of us interact together this whole trip just makes me not want to be together with her anymore. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I agree. We just don't mesh well to anymore. Yeah. What what you came here today? I like that she stood her ground the whole time, though. Hoping for what? I what? came on this whole trip with Luna just to make her happy. Hopefully that like she would notice that I care enough to spend time with her and do stuff that she wants to do. So that maybe you could get back together. Yeah. Wait, this is a trip. So they're here from Alabama on a trip, and this is what they do. And it. Oh my God! What a backstory! Oh my God! Imagine how awkward the rest of this trip was. I wonder if they even like Ubered back to the hotel together. But there's no happening with that, so I'm just like accepting it now and standing on no. Mm. Yeah. You say yes. You want to get back together? Um, if there were a maybe, I would say maybe, maybe. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot to work on. We can relate to each and everyone's story a little bit. Um, a lot of it is a lot about communication. I do something for her, she doesn't acknowledge it, right? So I feel like whatever I'm doing is just worthless, right? What do you do for me though that I don't acknowledge it? Not cheat on you! <laughs> I feel like I always acknowledge everything. I should have ended it, but I didn't know any better. And so we kind of dragged it on further than we should. And if you could just get the love languages right, you think you could be together? Uh, yeah. And the infidelity, yeah. I think so, because I feel like everyone here, like, the reason why we're not together is because, like, everyone's communication is so different. Mm, yeah. Like, it's just, just so, like, prominent. You did love me. You just loved me in the way that I couldn't even, like, realize. And then I loved you, but then you didn't care about everything that I did verbally for you. Like, me wanting to know where your, like, your whereabouts. He thought I was nagging him the whole time. I'm like, no, I just want to know where you are. Like, just let mm. me know so I can, like, just feel safe. So you're both trying to change that to be back together? I mean, I want to, but I don't know. I feel like you're not really ready for that conversation or something yet. She was my best friend. She well, the good thing is, is that this show is probably the missing piece in the puzzle. You know, this is a really good thing to do if you're close to getting back together with someone is go publicly talk about it in front of 564,000 people. She was my girlfriend, my best friend, and pretty much my family, but kind of shattered that. So it's kind of hard to rebuild. But you said yes, so. Yeah, I mean, like, there, there's always, there's, there's always oh, room. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. It's always room, but it's not gonna happen overnight kind of thing. I still need to work on myself. The next prompt is, I believed we would spend the rest of our lives together. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Crazy, they just keep going. They just keep on going. We got fucking, this is not even the last question. 
Okay, go ahead and turn around. Hmm. So Victor, you thought you would spend the rest of your life with Priscilla. Yeah, in the beginning I did, yeah. Uh, it's like I was saying earlier, I, I learned over the course that we weren't quite compatible, but in the beginning it was, I was like head over heels, I was completely in love. Hmm. She said it herself, I, I uh, pursued her. So just, I don't know. Just couldn't get over myself, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I'm just a fucking guy with a mustache. Like this is the exact relationship I've always dreamt of having and we always had that honest communication and he kept it through to the end because I said you know just always be honest with me and he was when he said that he this was something that he wanted to do or be in anymore so he's still one of my best friends and I will always have love for him I'm not in love with him anymore but that love I have for him will never cease hmm. Aww, fuck. Mia <laughs> so you thought you, were, you two were gonna spend the rest of your lives together. Yeah, I mean, I was like- What? What? It sounds like you didn't care at all. I'm, I'm just so, I'm fucking so thrown off right now. How do, they, how do these people really feel? Like, young. I was like 19. That's I was a baby. Um, yeah, wild. Like, I do hope to spend the rest of my life with you. You know, like, I hope that- Homies? Yeah, I hope that we're homies for like a real long time. Like, I hope that I get to be at your wedding and you get to be at mine and like, I don't know, I really appreciate you in my life, so. Aw. <laughs> it's cool that these people are cool with each other still. You know, Luna and Dane going on fucking trips with each other. I mean, they're not gonna be cool anymore after this. The next prompt is, my ex has a quality that will be really hard to find in someone else. Make your split decision in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Hmm. Well, you know, Luna just has her own qualities about her that, you know, like everybody, every other human does. So I'm not looking for qualities that Luna had in other people anyways. So I say no. He's just protesting now. He's taking a stand. He's like, you know what? No, you can be replaced. Mia, what qualities did Ray have that you don't feel like you can find in anyone else? You're a really dope person. I'm glad that I like found you and have you in my life. And I don't think anyone could like fill the specific spot that you fill in my life. It's not like a, like, oh, I could just like put another friend in your spot. I hate that I stepped on no. It's okay. the truth. No, it's like the no, still yeah. how I feel. I, I don't want you to think that you're not like special or anything like that. Cause you definitely like are a good person and someone that like came into my life and like changed it and um, in a net positive, honestly, even though we went through so much. But like, I thought that when we broke up, I would never find anyone that I got along with so well. And then I like did. Yeah. So like, I just, it, I, yeah, it was, yeah, it was proved to me that like, it's great that you're here, but if you like weren't, I don't, I think I'd be okay, which I'm sure that you would also be okay. Yeah, about. like yeah. it's not on a romantic. <laughs> it's totally, totally, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, level that yeah, I like yeah. stepped here. I appreciate that you're really supportive. I think with Victor, he, he just creates this quality of making me feel so safe and comfortable. He was like, I felt so comfortable anytime he would do this really reassuring thing when we would walk through a crowd. He would always place his hand towards the back of my neck to kind of like guide me in a way. And it was so subtle. I don't even know if you remember, but I, I think about that when I'm in big crowds. And hmm. Okay, go me. It's like I haven't found that sense of like where I'm with someone and I'm like, oh, I can hmm. just like be. It's amazing. It's uh, I think Priscilla's probably the kindest person that I've ever met. Uh, she's unbelievably nice. Even the people that are mean to her, which is probably not a good thing, but <laughs> she's super nice. She's incredibly hardworking. I've seen it personally, like the things that she's done to like, go out of her way to take care of her family. They fucking should have gotten married. God damn it, they should have gotten married. This, this pisses me off that they're not together. They're perfect for each other. What the fuck are you, do you mean you're not a relationship person, dude? Get married. She takes incredible care of our dog. Like that dog eats better than I do. Um, yeah, she's just somebody that you can lean on, rely on. Yeah. That's no. <laughs> also, she fucking, the way she used to kick me in the nuts, dude. Oh my God, the way she used to put me in a little gimp suit and I was a little gimpy little boy and she would fucking kick me in the nuts. Oh, and I would just love every second of it. Oh my God. Yeah, that's probably what I would say. Hey, the next prompt is, I'm ready to ask you in this studio right now. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, fuck. 
Fuck yeah, ending in the most toxic way possible. Let's go. Will you take me back? Okay, everyone, make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, everybody, go ahead and turn around. Okay, fucking thank God, holy shit. I mean, I, that would have been nice to watch, honestly, so. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Some people are like relieved, like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Not on camera, oh my God. Holy fuck, I've been filming for an hour and 13 minutes. Wow, what a fucking video that was. Please like this video if you want more videos that are this long, I guess. And tell me, let me know. Two lunch breaks or one? I'm curious. How long is your lunch break? I'm not going Bye. home. I'm on the dance floor till I'm all alone. Let's go. Orgasm. I couldn't orgasm. Hold it down till the, till the club is closed. Everyone in here, god damn.